Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Today, I want to go back and take a look at the static grass applicator that I showed you how to build about a year ago. Because, uh, you know, these things, they're slightly underpowered. Uh, and there's some other issues related to the size of the screen here. And they just don't work as well as they should or could uh, if we made some changes. So what I'm going to do is show you how I went about building a new, a more powerful, uh, better uh, version of the static grass applicator to use for work here on the Piedmont Southern. So let's go ahead and get started with a look at how to, how to go about building um, the new and improved version. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it, and click on. Um, one of the problems that I ran into with this video is that it ran uh, kind of long. So what I'm going to do, this is going to be a two-part video. So in part one, we'll start to you know, go through the introduction and, and go over the basic background on how to, uh, how to build this uh, device. At some convenient spot about midway through, I'll stop and uh, we will uh, uh, just break it in half. And then on Monday, we'll come back and I'll have part two of the video so that we can go ahead and finish the project. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with today's project. Now, as I said in the opening, uh, a lot of folks complained uh, rightfully that uh, these are kind of underpowered. And uh, another part of the problem is that the screen here, the mesh on here, is a little bit uh, too fine uh, to get a lot of, of movement of the static grass out onto the uh, work surface. So what you, uh, what you need uh, is a little bit more powerful unit then and um, a slightly larger mesh screen here instead of this fine T-strainer type screen. So I went ahead and started looking around and um, you know Luke Towen a few years ago came out with a, uh, a slightly higher powered unit. And so I decided to go ahead and base my design on his. The way Luke built his, he ended up with the unit that uh, encloses the negative ion generator and the battery and all the other electronics attached uh, vertically to a uh, plastic uh, container with a screen in it uh, to dispense the uh, static grass. Well, the problem I don't like with that design is that on a bi-level layout like mine, there are places where I can't get something like this in to, uh, to dispense the uh, static grass. So I wanted something that would be horizontal and that would look something like this, okay? Um, so I started thinking about how to go about doing that and what I want to show you today is the result of my thought process on this and how I went about uh, doing it. And, you know, I'll go over the various parts uh, first, and then I'll give you some tips on how to put uh, this together. Uh, and then we'll add the electronics and do everything else. Okay, so the first thing, let's take a look at what's involved with this. Now, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. Now, this is what's called a negative ion generator. And um, uh, up till a few years ago, um, about the only place I could find them was the source that uh, Luke Talon had listed. And by the way, I'll put a link to Luke's uh, original video on this uh, here above me on the left here. And um, I'll give you some information on, in the description for this video about the availability of this product and all the other parts that go into making this. Um, but basically what this does is it can take a small voltage like a 12-volt uh, power supply or even a 9-volt battery and it can uh, create a very, very high voltage uh, output. So what you can do is supply 12 volts to these red and black wires here and the output will be something around 20,000 volts. Now it's going to be a very low amperage, you know, so it's not going to kill you, but it will sting you, so you got to be careful playing with these things. Um, 
Now the, uh, when you use a nine volt battery, like I'm gonna show you, um, it, it's gonna give you proportionally less uh, voltage output. So it's not gonna be quite as strong as a full 20,000 volts. It's gonna be something on the order of around 15,000 volts, which will still give you a little, you know, teaser if you start touching the, uh, uh, the two cables together. Now, the way Luke built his original one, and uh, he has instructions on a website for it as well, uh, he set it up so that it could be used either with a plug-in wall transformer type 12 volt power supply or with a uh, nine volt battery. Now, you know, for most people, I think the nine volt is gonna be more than enough. And, uh, it, you know, I just didn't like the idea of having to plug it in somewhere with a cord dangling and trying to dispense, you know, static grass on the layout. So I'm just gonna go through the process of, of wiring it for the nine volt battery. Uh, but as I said, I will give you the link to uh, Luke uh, Towen's uh, original video on this. And if you decide you wanna go with a 12 volt power supply, you can just add that uh, connector in, uh, in place of the uh, nine volt or in addition to it. And he has a diagram that shows, you know, his wiring for that. Uh, but what I wanna do now is, is uh, talk a little bit more about this because these are available on eBay in large numbers. They're made in China and you can find them fairly inexpensively. And this one that I purchased uh, off of eBay uh, from a supplier in China, uh, and it was, I think, about $6.50 plus around $4 shipping. Interestingly, in spite of the fact that uh, this was sold by somebody in China, it was sent to me from somebody in New York. So I think he's probably got a drop ship operation through a warehouse set up in New York somewhere. So it didn't take all that long for it to arrive here. I think I got it in about two weeks, which is probably their processing time. Now, on this you see there are two fine wires and these are the input wires that you connect to your battery. And they're red and black and that's positive and negative. So it's you know the same as you will find for your uh, nine volt power supply. And then the same here on the output, these heavy uh, wires here, the red is the positive and the black is the negative. And I'll be using the negative for the ground wire and the red to go to the, uh, uh, to the screen in the uh, dispenser. Okay, the rest of it I can't show you because this is all potted in resin. Uh, all the electronics are buried down in there somewhere. Uh, there's a little heat sink here, which probably doesn't do a lot of good considering that it's buried in resin. The other thing here is a little, uh, what I call a trim pot. You can see that little brass screw there. That's for adjusting the voltage. So there is some adjustment to the voltage. They don't supply you any information about that uh, other than saying it is adjustable. So, you know, I'm gonna leave it where it's setting because it, uh, I, get, I gave it a quick test with the battery and it popped real nice and bright, so I'm not worried about it. And considering that the, uh, uh, the bug zapper version was only at a, about 2,000 volts output. If this thing is putting out anywhere near 15,000, I don't think it's uh, gonna be a problem. Okay, so that's the negative ion generator that's going to create the static electric field for the static grass. Now this obviously is a nine volt battery. I got this uh, typical nine volt um, connector uh, off of allelectronics.com. Okay, I buy just about all of my electronic parts from them if they have them. Um, so you can order that. Uh, I got this little push button here. Okay, I'm gonna use that to turn it on and off. It's a momentary contact. So when you push down, it will be on. When you release it, it will be off. So that's a standard little uh, momentary on off push button. And they have various other kinds. You can get bigger ones and all kinds of other sizes, but you know, it, it's not, you know, rocket science. All you need is an on off push button. Uh, in Luke's design, he used a rocker type uh, on off on switch. So he would turn it on and, and it would just stay on. Uh, okay, the other thing here, I've got a red LED and a uh, uh, 2.2K 
ohm resistor uh, for that uh, LED so we'll know uh, when the power is being supplied to the device that the red light will come on. And uh, other than that, I'm using some JB Weld uh, five minute epoxy, sets up in one hour, and uh, we'll see how that works. Um, the holder for this, or the, en the enclosure for this setup, uh, pretty much is dictated by the size of your negative ion generator. So it fits nicely in to this one and a half inch Schedule 40 uh, conduit. Okay, so it's PVC conduit. Uh, I just had this around, so I'm using the gray. Um, you can use the white PVC uh, uh, plumbing pipe. Uh, whatever you can get plastic that this will fit in is great. Okay, now it is a little bit heavy, but you know, when you're making something at home, you go with what you've got, right? Um, also an end cap, and that's just going to be on here so that you can open it and replace the battery as needed. Okay, And then uh, my wife came up with this nice little Rubbermaid uh, storage container here, and you can see it will screw on so we'll be able to dump our static grass in here and put the lid on with a screen here, and then we'll be able to dust the static grass on the work surface. Um, so what I want to do now is start uh, looking at how I decided how to put this all together. Now, as I said, I wanted something that would be held level, horizontal, like this. And in order to get it to uh, sit horizontal, it does require a little bit of cutting and fitting. Okay, And I've already done that because, you know, it's raining here, it's cold outside, and I can't do this in the driveway or the garage because it would get... Uh, plastic dust all over the place. So I did it in the back of the pickup truck and um, you know, it's done. So I'll show you what I did and you know, it'll be up to you to kind of figure out how you can do it with the equipment that you have. Now, another thing, this uh, Rubbermaid storage uh, container isn't all that sturdy and I suspect that after a while it's going to break. And so I've started looking at possibly switching to a slightly larger one that's a little bit more hefty, but you know, we'll see how this one holds up. Okay, so what did I do? Okay, so I want it to be able to sit on top of this plastic storage container like this, and it's got to be able to support it. So what I did was I made a cut about a little over halfway through here, like that, and then I cut it lengthwise. So it left me with a device that looked, or a cut out like this. And then I just took the saw and made a couple of cuts straight in here. Okay. Now what that's going to give me is two arms that will fit into this device here, or into the storage container, and support it. And then the top, which will also help support it. And you know, I've considered whether or not I could put a screw down through here and into it to help. But I think that these two little arms uh, that will go into the uh, uh, storage container here um, will actually do the job, particularly once it's epoxied in there. So we'll see how that works. So basically then I've got these two fingers here that will go into slots cut into this device or into this storage container. And um, I'm going to just epoxy them in place. Now, as far as uh, getting this set up, I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see this. Right here, I just made a couple of cuts into it using uh, my X-Acto knife. It's very simple to do. And right up near the top here, so that these two little projections or fingers can slide into it. So I'll give you an idea of how that fits together. It's going to slide in there and it's going to support that, okay, like that. And then I'll be able to put a hole in here for my a uh, positive uh, wire, feed wire, to connect to the screen that we'll put into this lid here in a minute. Okay, so then inside of here we'll have the battery and the negative ion generator and we'll have the on-off switch. And then we'll be able to fill this and just shake the static grass out. At least that's the plan. So let's see how that works. 
So let's go ahead and figure out what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to cut out a circle uh, here in the cap. And for that, I think I'll probably use my Dremel tool. And um, I've got some bits that we can use to do that. And then we'll just put in some uh, aluminum screen wire that I happen to have around. I've got the lid on here, so let's go ahead and mark off uh, the outline for where we want to cut. like so, and then let's see if we can cut this sucker. Got my Dremel tool, and we should be able to just plunge in here. Okay, that made pretty quick work of that. Okay, so we've got that cut out. Now let's get some screen. Oh, here it is. And this is just plain old aluminum window screen that I picked up at the hardware store a long time ago, probably at Lowe's. And let's put this down here. And I'm just gonna mark off the inside dimensions and we'll cut outside of that. So if we go like this, That gives me an outline to cut to. So now I've cut that out. And let's see if it's going to fit. Yep, it goes down in here just right. And what I'm going to do then is run a bead of epoxy around the outside here and uh, that will hold it in place. So there that's in place, and let's try this. This JB Weld, it has this uh, extension nozzle, and the two uh, uh, parts of the resin and the activator flow down through here and they mix as they go, and they come out well mixed, supposedly. At any rate, let's go ahead, and uh, it's moving down. And when it gets down in there, I'm going to go ahead and work it down into the uh, material. Then I want to make sure I've got it poked down in here very well. Keeping it in place is a problem. So I'm just going to keep working this for the next five minutes and then we'll go on. Well, I've been playing with this epoxy for a while and this has fully cured. Well, close to it anyway. Uh, it'll be clear, it, it takes an hour for it to completely cure, but it's good and steady in there now. And here um, I went ahead and since I was Getting covered in epoxy anyway, I went ahead and installed the uh, holder here, the static grass holder on the end of the handle, and got that epoxied in place. So um, it's coming along. I've done a couple of applications. So it seems to have uh, hardened out fairly well. And um, one thing I found out, uh, alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, you can uh, get the epoxy off. Uh, because I tell you, I have never used liquid epoxy uh, without getting it all over God's little green acre in creation. So be aware of that and uh, be ready with a bunch of paper towels and some uh, isopropyl alcohol. And hopefully you'll be able to keep it under control better than I was able to. So the next part I want to do is go ahead and start uh, installing the other components. But I can't do that until this is at least uh, cured to the point where I'm not going to get goo all over the place. So I'm going to go ahead and um, let this finish uh, setting up. But you can get an idea now what it's going to be like. We're going to have this um, handheld uh, device. We'll be able to uh, hit a push button, turn it on, and shake away and pump out 20,000 or 15,000 volts of uh, 
electrostatic energy uh, to work on this static grass. I uh, went ahead and let this sit overnight because it just was still a little bit tacky and sticky after a few hours. And at this point now, it's good and hard. This sucker is on here good and tight. And, you know, I've got it all ready to go. So, um, for the future, uh, what I would do is go ahead and install all of the electronics first after you've made the initial cut uh, that I showed you. And then, once you've installed all the electronic components, then go ahead and uh, add the uh, storage container here on the end uh, because it'll just make uh, soldering and, and installation a lot easier because you'll be able to work from the open end here, which I'm not going to be able to do. But I'm still going to be able to put it together. It's just going to require a little bit longer wires and a little bit more work and fiddling. But um, I was really intent on making sure that this was going to work, uh, the installation method that I, I came up with, and that the epoxy was going to hold it firmly. And now that I've established that, I'd feel very comfortable going ahead, doing the electronic work first, and then installing the little container here, the Rubbermaid storage container, on the end. So you can see now, this is how it's going to work. Uh, there will be a push button here, and we'll be able to just shake, and that will uh, do a very good job, I think. But let's see how it's going to work. We've got to install it and put it together first. Okay, we've reached a good stopping point here, so uh, this is where we'll break the uh, video. Come on back on Monday for part two of the project so you can see how I finish this, and you can see whether or not the darn thing works at all. In the meantime, have a great weekend, and we'll see you here on Monday with part two of how to build this uh, new and more powerful, uh, hopefully, um, static grass applicator. Thanks a lot, and have a good weekend. Bye now.